Um, so yes, tonight we are in Brighton with Bridget Saunders and um, Deborah Kalinka. Now, Deborah is um, she's doing her Greek lessons tonight, isn't she? So she's 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 not with us, but we've pre-recorded a chat. So we're going to play the pre-recorded chat, and then you have the opportunity to ask questions. Um, to Bridget if you if you want to um, and Bridget's got a few other little bits and pieces to, to talk about um, so welcome Bridge nice to see you <laughs> she's not hello hi everyone <laughs> <laughs> okay and I noticed that Bridget's piano is in the background so she might give us a little tinkle later on you never Ooh, know you never know <laughs> <laughs> okay all right well I'm going to go into screen share and we're going to play the conversation we had a couple of days ago um, with all of us uh, let me just uh, do it properly and make sure that um, Okay, hello, hi. hi. Um, so tonight we are in Brighton, uh, in East Sussex, so not too far away from me. And um, we're talking to these two lovely ladies who are standing in front of us, and that's obviously at Sissinghurst, um, Bridget Saunders and Deborah Kalinka, who are, got, who are the Garden House Brighton. Um, welcome, you guys. Lovely to see you. you. Hi. Looking nice to see you. Nice to see you. So, um, I, I think uh, you know. Tell us. Uh, this is this is looking down into the garden house. But tell us um, for those people who are far afield and in some far flung corner of the world. Just give us an idea of where you are and talk. You know the location and everything, and then we'll talk a little bit more about what the garden house is all about. Okay. Well, first of all, as Annie said, we're based in Brighton, and Brighton is on the south coast of. Um, England so directly below London I guess mm -hmm. um, and um, it's a, a city it's a large uh, a fairly a small city but a large it was a large town it's now got city status it's got a population of about 300,000 um, and it's a pretty mixed community um, a lot of people come here to university we've got two universities in the city mm -hmm. and a lot of people like Brighton so much they stay on so, um, I mean, like Bridget and myself, there are a lot of people of our age who have come to university, but also obviously lots of young people as well. Mm. Um, Brighton has got a reputation for being rather um, unconventional, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. And it's always had that reputation right back to the 50s. It had a, perhaps a bit more of a seedy atmosphere, but now it's just, it's, it's a very liberal, a, li a very liberal city yeah. to live in. Yeah. Um, it's a party town, I guess, for, for young people, you know, yeah. lots of clubs and all that sort of thing. Um, and as I said, it's right on the coast and, and, and the coastline is chalk. So we've right. got this sort of um, chalk um, soil, which um, Bridge will talk about perhaps a bit later. Yeah. And then behind us, we've got this sort of swathe of um, hills called the Downs and the Downs stretch all the way along the south southern part of um, this this part of England so right. it's a very yeah. lovely place to live yeah and I know because I've been to the garden house several occasions uh, and, and the first time you visit is 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 so exciting because you 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 know you pitch up in a terrace street a rather rather posh terrace street in Brighton and um and then you and then you're directed there's a gateway and you're directed to this little alley this little steep alley that runs down beside the house and you don't know what to expect and um well you sort of expect you're going to see a small urban garden at the back of because off you know anyone who knows brighton knows that a lot of gardens are postage stamp size and they're all in different levels but then when you get to the end of this little alleyway oh my goodness me you know you're you're, <laughs> you're blown away by the fact so i think the first time that anyone visits the garden house you know it's such a surprise because what's revealed at the end of the alleyway is not a little small suburban garden. It's this sort of sprawl of gardens all on a, all on a slope. So it's quite hard to sort of see in one vista, but you, but you are, it's not what you expect, is it? It's really unusual. Mm. So, um, and it's, and so Bridge, maybe you could explain a, a little bit about how the garden is the way it is because it's so unusual. Yeah, OK. Yeah, you're right. It is an amazing surprise and certainly was to us when we first saw it. We've been here for 21 years and um, <clears throat> we were introduced to the garden by our neighbours who told us it was up for sale. And uh, being, as you say, Brighton's very densely populated, especially around this area. So to find this was just a 
such a surprise when we first saw it. So, uh, so it's set in a third of an acre, which is not actually that big, but for here it is. And um, it was an old market garden. So back in the 1880s, um, that's what happened. It used to sell fruit and flowers to the surrounding areas. So that was why it's, I mean, there are a few gardens in Brighton like that, certainly um, gardens that used to be the laundry um, to the, the pavilion, in fact, but this particular garden was a market garden. Right, right. Um, so, and yeah, we'll yeah. talk, we'll obviously we'll concentrate on the garden and what you do, but let's just go back a bit in, in time. And, and how did you two get together and start all of this? Um, so, and, and what are your individual backgrounds? So where, what have you done before the garden house? start bridge because then i can okay with me. all right okay um how does it start okay well for many years i was a social worker and then i retrained as a horticulturist um in my uh early 40s and um did various horticultural qualifications and then trained as a teacher and taught at plumpton college um which is a college just in just on the outskirts of brighton um, for about 26 years so I was doing that for a long time and one of the things I did was I taught adult education a lot of ad adult education classes which I really enjoyed because it was you know people doing leisure courses and then uh, then suddenly that's you know there are a lot of cuts and they didn't happen anymore so it was then that I thought oh I'd really like to do something at home really and it was it sort of snowballed from there really and uh, so we started to teach from here which mm, yes. where Deborah came in really. Yes. So, uh, so, 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 sorry, Deborah. So, your background is is so, so my background's in teaching, and mm. and I've been teaching for a long while, and I suppose I've become rather disenchanted with teaching because um, I taught. I was a primary school teacher, and there was a great emphasis latterly on preparing for SATs tests and um, etc. And for me, that really isn't what 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 my interest was, I, I didn't, I lost my interest, I suppose, in teaching. And um, I went on one course and had my sort of passion for gardening uh, ignited, if you like. Um, on a Friday, I used to go to that, that course. And then the next year I did another course and then the RHS course and Bridge was my teacher then. And she was also, she ran a few courses in her garden mm -hmm. and, um, we just sort of hit it off and we decided that, you know, we could perhaps do something together, which is exactly what we did do. We yeah. Did, yeah. Yeah. So we, we started off. Um, I mean, it's interesting, Anna, you talk about the garden being, I think, a hidden gem in your mm. Instagram. Yeah. And Bridge, Bridge obviously had contacts with a lot of people in Brighton who also had hidden gardens, if you like. And so our, our initial course or our initial um set of visits was putting together some hidden gardens of Brighton of which mm -hmm. there are many mm -hmm. and um we would meet we would take a group to this hidden garden we'd all have a picnic together it was it was really good fun you know and and I guess it snowballed from there and also the Christmas wreaths which were up on this well yeah yeah the, that's also what we did and we did that in my front room at that time right um, <laughs> Um, well, I suppose it's also worth just just mentioning we've got these slides rolling in the background. I mean, there are some in Africa and there are some in Japan and and some of them. So and, and they're not all at the garden house. But but these slides have been put together by you guys um, in terms of, you know, people that you are associated with. And, and so so there's a lovely mixture of, of I suppose, to give everyone a flavour of what the garden house and what you two are all about. And and we can talk about all the things that, that you do. So, I mean, obviously, this image, for example, isn't the garden house. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so just just in case people are thinking well it's absolutely vast and you know i saw a sort of beautiful edwardian <laughs> terrace a little one <laughs> yeah so um so, okay so you got together then and started this about 20 years ago and 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 what was your what was your vision then when you started oh, what was our vision when we started well i think we just wanted people to be able to learn for learning's sake you know mm. um, we wanted to really inspire people and and create an atmosphere where people could come and just be and learn you know without having to I don't know write lesson plans and do all that kind of stuff and and you know engage people doing exams etc we just wanted it to be a place where people could really really indulge their passion really of, of horticulture mm. and, and along with inviting you know experts to help us with that really as well yeah well yeah that was our what we wanted yes. really. I mean I think everything we've done has been things that Bridge and I 
personally would like to do ourselves yes. in a way yeah. and so the people that we invited to come and teach were people that that we found inspirational or we went on visits to places that we knew like like just recently on the on the screen the corners midwinter fire mm. we went a few times to anglesey abbey in oh, a, right. we did a few coach trips to places that we we wanted to go to or we had been to and we knew that other people would like so everything the, the the yes i guess everything we do are things that we ourselves would like to do and we, yeah and we also when we went to anglesey abbey for instance we asked the head gardener to um get out some plants that were right, uh, yes. you know the winter plants and he labeled them all for us and we met him and that was really exciting mm. so it mm. felt very special that we you know we'd actually not just gone for a trip but we'd you know really engage with the plants and you know it was a real learning experience so that was so, so really i mean with you two in the garden house it's a it's a place for people to come but education is at the core isn't it i mean it's a it's a, it's a lovely destination but education is definitely your kind of a mission if you like yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah and i love the fact that I, I, you you you've got courses practical courses and you call them learn by doing i think that's such a lovely term you know it's like because things like pruning and horticultural techniques you know illustrations in books and people you know standing up and giving you a, a powerpoint presentation just isn't just doesn't really do it you have to do it to know it don't you yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so when you when you first started together how did you how did you get the word out how did you drum up interest and, and get people you know what was it word of mouth a lot at the beginning or that's an interesting it, question it, it's quite difficult yes to get it was wide, word of it? mouth and also we would print off little cards but i mean i don't know how many how many people that reached it was word of mouth and slowly the snowball you know increased and, mm. and you had your friday group which i don't know yeah that's a good yeah time. okay so i run a group here on a friday um, called the friday group funnily enough and <laughs> they've been coming for about the last oh i don't know 18 years on a friday wow. um a group come there's about 23 of them and they come and i teach them and then we garden together so that was also a very sort of integral part of the garden house, really, and getting the word out. There are also people that are very engaged and a part of the garden, really. Um, mm. So, yeah, but we also did a lot of flyers and yes. back in the day when it was OK to do all those things. Yeah, yeah. You know, we were yes. putting flyers absolutely everywhere. We were, we? Yes. And, and also our website, we were developing that. We got we got a website quite soon. It we was did, very basic. Yeah, but it, yeah was, it, it was. It was. Mm. But yeah back in the day it mm. felt very uh, very modern didn't it yeah. did. and i think i think word i mean as you say word of mouth so friends of friends you know you say about learning by doing well one of our our um things that we did do was this we called it our summer school where mm. we we um took people to different gardens to work within so mm -hmm. we we went to Great Dixter and, and in a way this was before that you could go to some of these places and do practical gardening. It was, mm -hmm. I'm not saying, you know, we're marvellously inventive, but it was something that we thought we would like to be doing. Mm -hmm. And Bridge with her contacts, having taught quite a few people over the years, had contacts with some of the gardens. And so we went to Great Dixter and worked, you know, we worked right, with Fergus right. and it was such a wonderful occasion because we finished, well, we, we went there a few times. I've got such wonderful memories, but one of them when he gave each person that had helped in the garden a clematis and do you remember that when we all went off for the clematis yeah. that was really lovely and i remember when we had to, we had to uh the zinnias we had to stake the zinnias <laughs> of course the stakes weren't straight enough and we had to take them all out and do them all <laughs> that was fantastic and yeah we also went to grave time manor mm -hmm. and worked alongside and tom and it we? was in his first year wasn't yeah because we'd met him at yes um, yes yeah, yeah. Uh, th there's a picture up now of this long alleyway that you walk down oh, I, just, yeah. right, yes. I just wanted to point that out to people so we're looking back up to the street here but you walk down this little quite steep alleyway and then suddenly it, it all appears which is which is such a lovely treat so mm. so tell us a bit more about the collaborations you have so you've mentioned grave tie and dixter um so who else have you been sort of either going to work with or or come to you um well on that on that summer school we also went to charleston and worked oh. with mark Dubon, yeah, the yeah. gardener there yeah. which was great which was lovely because that's obviously quite a sort of key um historic house near what near mm. brighton mm. um 
we've been went to, to Grim- Standard, didn't we? Oh, we, we went, went to Standard, Standard and that yes. was quite an experience because we were um, asked to prune the camellias, which are about, you know, 300 oh, years old. Yeah, big responsibility, but that was good fun. We worked in a herb nursery, didn't we? Yes. Um, I'm just trying to think. Oh, we also went to um, Oldsford, is it? The, um, oh, the um, Pit Dialysis, the Dialysis nursery. nursery. So yeah. we just worked in various sort of nurseries and gardens. And it was a great mm-hmm. experience. Actually, I to, uh, another really good trip um, was when we took a group of people down to Devon. Oh, because yes. Bridge had been um, part of the, opened up the NGS and had Carol Klein here. So we asked her, Carol Klein, if we could go down and work in her garden with this little group. And we sort of built this these few days away round visiting Carol Klein's garden. Mm. Um, and that that was a really that was great. That was it? great fun. That was really mm. good fun. So we helped her, yeah. We her helped garden. her in her garden. I, and she gave everybody a plant. And it was it was really a, a great experience mm. for everybody. And, and did that is that where you started off doing your garden tours because you do do some fairly adventurous garden tours now don't you yes it probably that probably was i think it was the first one one, wasn't it yeah it was yeah it was yes i think the second one was was the The second one was south africa so we went to just going to put some wood on the fire okay (laughs) we went went from devon to south africa that's right And nothing by halves. <laughs> yes. So yeah. we went there in 2010 or 2009. Right. 2009, we went, we went to South Africa, which was an incredible experience, actually. And again, then it was quite a thing, really. I think we took about 24 people, yeah. something like that. Wow. Um, with us. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was just such an amazing experience. We went, we wanted to go to look at um, the wild, the pelagoniums, the species pelagoniums growing. Mm-hmm. Um, we went to Namakulan, didn't we? Mm. We went to see, we also wanted to go and see the daisies, all the algorantamans and all that kind of stuff. And mm. when we got there, they kind of, they were a bit over. A bit over. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was okay. Yeah. We saw many amazing things there, didn't we? It's absolutely oh, it was, brilliant. It was a wonderful trip. Really yes, wonderful. and uh, we don't just really want to look at um, the horticultural aspect of things. We also want to look we like we're really interested in the culture and the art and the cooking and all sorts of other aspects really mm, so yeah. we we did a lot of that on that trip mm, didn't we, we? Did. And, yeah. and and this slide it, it leads me into the next one so japan i know japan is very close to your heart and have you done is it three trips to japan yeah three trips and hopefully, hopefully some more um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah nice three trips yeah we've done three trips and oh. uh well, what an experience, really. They've just been incredible experiences. And, and have, did you visit different parts of Japan each on each of those trips? No, we did in different... Well, we, we went twice in the autumn yeah. and once in the spring. Right. And we did, we did visit different places, but also the same places as well, um, mm. just because it was, you know, it's quite a difficult country to negotiate. So that was a, a way... Yeah. Of, really, yeah. We'd made quite a lot of connections, I suppose, and we, so we did it that way. So last time we went was in the spring. Right. And did you make it up to the Millennium Forest? You did, I think. No, we didn't. Oh, we didn't. Oh, no. no. But we are, yeah, let's hope next time. I'd like yes, to, yeah, yeah. It's quite a long way, isn't it, away? So, yeah, but yeah. Mm. So going back to Brighton, who, who who is it that comes to you? I mean, is there a typical kind of person that, that comes to the garden house? And do they come from far afield? Or is it the sort of core of Brighton um, kind of devotees? Who would you say is your sort of typical? Yes, so there's a core... Um, we, we have some people who come on a lot of our events and, and our trips as well. Mm. Um, but recently, well, I think for our, our learning by doing, our beginner gardening course, that's obviously always new people who are coming to garden, gardening, which is really lovely. Um, and well, we do Instagram and we're trying to sort of, um, I suppose, reach people who don't know about us, mm. you know, mm. and that's always, that's always a difficulty, really. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. How do you get the word yes. out? Yes. Mm. Um, I, mean, now, I, was, I was going to ask you about your um, demographic. Uh, I mean, the sort of classic with gardeners, um, 
older, usually getting middle class. I mean, have you been able to engage more with younger people or anybody outside that that normal demographic? Yeah, a bit, yes. I mean, I think, as Deborah said, on our learning by doing first-time gardener courses, we have had younger people. And interestingly, mm. when I, I used to teach at college, and I taught a lot of younger people there. So, I, I mean, it, it's really important, I feel, to get younger people here, you know, really important. Mm. Um, and... So, yeah, they're the courses that really are the ones, those two, mm. aren't they, that attract younger people? Yes. And in fact, quite a few of your students came <coughs> as a result of knowing you at college. They came to our beginner gardening courses, didn't they? And then followed up courses as well. Yeah. I mean, we've had people that have learned here that have gone to be head gardeners. We've got, um, I'm trying to think about um, uh, Rosemary, Alexander. Rosemary Alexander's head gardener. She starts off here. So there have been, yeah, I mean, so quite a lot of the people are, are perhaps not, uh, they're, they're perhaps at a stage in their career where they want to do something different. Yeah. So they might be, you know, quite a few people in their 40s or maybe later. Mm. I'm, I'm not saying they're inspired by us that we're doing something, you know, as a second career or anything. But it, I, I guess it does sort of show people that you can do something different in your life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, we've had, but we have had a, a lot of young people. Yeah. Though, yeah. We? yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and the fact that your site, I mean, you mentioned the fact that you are, it's chalk, it's, you know, as, as anyone who knows Brighton, you, they know it's hilly. Um, it is on the chalky chalk. It's on the downs. It's on that band of chalk that goes across the south of England. So for anybody who's struggling with working on chalk and working on a precipitous slope, because I know your garden in places is quite steep. So I mean, do you find that that helps in, in terms of, um, you know, it's not an easy site to garden on. So do you do you think that's part of it that people come and they can they can see solutions? I think the fact it's a domestic garden, because mm. that's what it is. I mm. mean, it, the little garden full of lots of very interesting plants and things mm. and yes I think that that's a draw because mm -hmm. that's something that people feel they can achieve themselves I hope mm -hmm. um yeah I mean I think the the soil here in this garden is actually really good because it used as I said it used to be a market garden mm. so it's been very much improved and since we've been here as I said 21 years and we've improved it as well so the soil mm. actually is really really good so people quite like digging here because it's very easy <laughs> Good. And can, because you're in Brighton, can you get away with growing? Can you push the boundaries and get away with growing things that, you know, I'm I'm only 40 miles from you, but 35 miles from you. But, you know, can you can you push the boundaries a bit with with tender plants? Yeah, we can. And the other thing about this garden is quite sheltered mm -hmm. on the, perhaps the picture will come around. I think it might come around again in a minute of where it yes where it is. Mm, I think it's yes. coming in a minute. Yeah. You can just see, um, I think the next picture you can see how it's we're surrounded by many other houses so it's quite yeah. sheltered here so yeah we can there we go yeah yeah, yeah. so this there's is, a sort of heat island effect really um, yeah yeah, yeah there comes. is here we are look there we are you yeah. can just yeah. see that's the road behind us there yeah so you can just see that those two glass houses are ours and, yeah yeah so okay. it's um yeah. and and with and the courses that you offer um what would you say are probably the most popular or the most sought after what is it that people you know what is it that people find you know, most mystifying about horticulture and gardening that, that you think they come, you know, that, that you can offer them? What are the popular ones? Um, well, I think, I think the first time gardener course is popular. And I think what, what was it, what was, we make it quite attractive is that we were teaching it in the evenings. So people could come straight from work. Mm -hmm. As Bridge, I think alluded to earlier, we, we like um, food and wine as well. Mm -hmm. And so they would come after work and we'd, we'd teach them. There, so there'd be a teaching input and then we would stop for a light supper and a glass of wine. And then we'd have more sort of learning after, after supper. Yeah. And it was just a very easy, enjoyable um event for people to come down to the garden house after a after a day day at work and, mm. and i guess that was attracted to younger people yeah um, yeah certainly uh, you know you normally would go maybe to i don't know uh, a college and end up eating a you know a bar of chocolate out of a vending machine and we were offering this nice supper and i think that was yeah <laughs> well I know, I, I know from experience having taught there that you do get a gorgeous gorgeous homemade lunch so i can i can vouch for that and what about yeah. what about schools do, do schools come along do, do children come along 
Not so no, much. No. no, they don't. I mean, on one level, of course, you know, I was a teacher, as I say, but the, the garden is not really, uh, I, I mean, it's a bit hazardous, really, for lots yeah. of children. Mm. And um, we have been asked about that, but we yeah. haven't, we've never, I think for health and safety reasons, insurance reasons. Yeah. yeah look at the steep steps. I know, exactly. That's a perfectly timed slide there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, you can and there's a big pond. I mean, there's no reason why the children would leap in the pond, but you know, it, it just yeah. not really, yeah. unfortunately on, on one level. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. But, but you but you also venture into more sort of art and craft as not just purely horticulture don't you you sort of you you stretch the boundaries a little bit yeah yes. we do yes and we, but, I mean I think all the art and craft courses that we do are all sort of horticulturally horticulturally related they're all plant you know, related plant, aren't they? yeah, yeah, it's like all. the garden is an inspiration whether it right. be somebody coming to run a watercolor course because we've right. had um we've had some you know, there are some great local artists. Yeah. Um, Kate Osborne and Shana Mallon are both teach watercolouring and mm, mm. Um, other oh just we've a, a whole range of wonderful courses I think we've we've yeah. offered over the years. Botanical yeah. botanical drawing oh, yes. we have um have run many times with somebody called Leanne Gale who's brilliant. <laughs> so that's been, you know, obviously again horticulturally based. Mm -hmm. And then we've done things like um paper collage with Jane Robbins, which again mm. was Based on the garden, yeah, yes. yeah, lots and lots of them. You yes. know, it's a great place to sit and get inspiration, basically. So, that yeah, makes, yeah. So, you can see in that slide of the oh bridge that she didn't <laughs> want us to put on, but when we went to Ireland, yes, we also because you know, we like cooking and things, we went to the Ballymaloo Cookery School, yeah, and, right. which was wonderful, you yeah, know, brilliant. because you know, you could obviously look at gardens as wonderful, but it's it makes it a more uh, interesting program if you can offer uh, some other activities that the people can, can become involved in. So, and we really but, like, we, went, yeah. we went around a garden at Ballymaloo, didn't we? Yeah, as we well, did. which yeah, was fantastic. Yeah. And, yeah. and for people who 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 don't know where that is, it's Darina Allen who's based on um, in, in Cork. It's Cork, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, west is it West Cork? Um, in on the west coast of Ireland, a very famous um, cooking school and um, and garden, which uh, yeah. yeah. So, okay, that, that's, that's fantastic. So you also open up for charities like the NGS. And again, for people who, are, who don't know what the NGS, it's the National Garden Scheme. So um, tell us a little bit about some of the, the charities that you open up for and, and, and a little bit about the NGS days. Yeah, okay. Um, well, we started doing that many years ago, really. And that was when Carol Klein came here and filmed us. She came to ah. the garden and we had this kind of, you know, will they, won't they be good enough to open program? I don't know. Oh, right. That. Yes, I remember that. Yes, I remember that series. So, yes, and she came here and it was all very good fun. Yeah. And um, so we did open. So we've been opening for 12 years, I think it is now. Mm -hmm. um, so every spring we open for the to show the tulips. And then in summer, because we have a lot of roses here, we've got about, I think, about 75 different roses here. So we wow. open. Um, yeah, in June for that as well. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's really important to open the garden for charity because it feels like, you know, people can come and share the garden. So we've we've done mm. lots of charity events, I, haven't we? Yes, really, so I think uh, one of the, the ones that was rather special was, um, I mean, as I said, Bridge and I, what, what's nice about working together is that we can do things that we want to, want to enjoy oh. ourselves, if oh. you like. So... Um, I we were down here in the garden house, and I, I was we were talking about a book that we'd both read, oh, yeah. which is called Plot Twenty Nine by oh, yeah. Alan Jenkins. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, oh, it'd be so nice. You know, why why don't we ask him if he'd like to come down and give a, a talk or have a supper with us? Because we have had suppers down here with various with the various Fergus. with Fergus Garrett and um, who else we had julian true oh, yes those people but, oh and um andy sturgeon, andy sturgeon uh, we had yeah. lunch with anyway so um we we so i thought oh, well i'll just email him mm -hmm. so dear alan blah 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 would you like to come down i'm thinking oh well he's just gonna ignore us and, and an email came back by return <laughs> wow and yeah. it was so warm and friendly it was just mm. incredible really it was really mm. lovely mm. and i don't know if you've also read he wrote a book called morning because he loves to get up very early in the morning. Mm. So we thought, well, rather than asking him for supper, let's ask him for breakfast. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. So, so we, 
wrote that back to him, you know, would you like to come for breakfast? Yes, I look, look forward to it, blah, blah. Yeah. And then we said, well, how much will you charge? And he said, oh, I won't charge you anything, just the train fare, which is an incredibly generous mm. gesture, really. Yeah. Um, and, and we thought, well, what we can do is to run it as a charity event, because he wrote a book called Clock 29. And here in Hove, Brighton and Hove, there's a charity called Plot 22, oh, yeah. which has this wonderful um, community um, allotment, allotment mm. um, to support people with, you know, to come together and work on the allotment. Mm. So we invited the, what, what was that? that what lovely I woman, lovely woman, young woman came, yeah, along came along from Plot 22. And we had about 16 people in the garden, or maybe even a few more, actually. We all had breakfast together with Alan Jenkins. And um, it was, you know, that was a wonderful charity event. Yeah, that was one that, one he that's... talked about his book. It was very moving, questions. actually. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Really yeah, it's a great so, book. Yeah. Great book. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it was so that very was, inspirational. That was, that was really special. And we've done lots of charity events that have been you know close to our heart you know my mum had multiple sclerosis and we did a lot of fundraising for that and various mm -hmm. other various mm -hmm. charities which has been great we've had lots of then had lots of local artists and makers in the garden selling things mm -hmm. and also local nurseries we've had selling yeah. plants which has been great so we've yeah. got you know, a lot of connections with local nurseries so yes yeah. so you did ask us any earlier about yeah. other people that we have a connection with and of course um, Graham Goff at March of Tart right. Plants is, is yeah. dear to us. So we've taken groups there and yeah. had some really fun, fun times there. Yeah. Um, we've been, we ran um, a course several times called Plants Person, Personship, mm -hmm. uh, focusing on plants and taking people to Marchants as part of that course. So and yeah. also, also we're very um, closely connected with Paul and Pauline at the Sussex Prairie oh, yes. Garden. Mm -hmm. So we've done a lot alongside them. We work together with them sometimes to run courses on plants. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another. Yeah. So thinking ahead to the future. So um, I'd like to know sort of what, what you know, uh, future trips that you're planning apart from Japan, because I know Japan's are definitely in your diary. Well, definitely you know, to, to be in your diary. Um, but where, where else would you love to go and take a group to to visit? around the world what, what would your oh, dream it. dream trip be oh, a, a more realistic trip well bridge thinks of a dream trip trip <laughs> <laughs> is, um, a return to madeira we took uh -huh. a trip to madeira yes, right. and i guess we thought it would be a little bit sort of old-fashioned and a bit i don't know i you just have this yeah. image of yeah. but we had such a fantastic time mm -hmm. it was really wonderful mm. and so a, a return trip to Madeira is definitely on the and cover. what what was it about that trip to Madeira so you know because again I know certainly from from a UK perspective you think of sort of you know cruises to Madeira and, yeah. and it being a sort of saga holiday or something it's, it's but, exactly but, right. but tell, tell, tell us what made it such a, an interesting trip such the guide, guide was amazing she was mm -hmm. just a brilliant horticulturalist she which was, was brilliant that we got her and she was so inspirational and showed us around all and I think that was what that was one that really made it special you know the great mm -hmm. yes. I think you know we, we we I mean I you say dream I mean I'd, I'd really like to go back to Holland again actually yes. we had such a good time there mm -hmm. Karen Janssen's nursery Chris Gislin on the way down into in Belgium and mm -hmm. Pete and Pete Rudolph but because he's not with me his god I don't think anymore is he but no, we you know that was special. really great going there actually we had a lovely we did a really special time going there we've been there a couple of times actually haven't we yes mm. in, a, in a coach i mean and that sounds a bit sort of um i don't know old person, old person -y, but actually <laughs> the, 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 well it was before brexit I, I bet you've got a crate of guinness in the back of that coach our coach was like sitting in a, a greenhouse it was absolutely fantastic <laughs> i can imagine it was before brexit and it, you could just bring plants in with with no problem oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. We had such a wonderful I, I time. I think, I think also, Annie, we we've been to Ireland um, mm. a few times, and for me, I just really, I know both of us, it's just such a brilliant place to go visiting Jimmy and June Blake, and visiting um, Hester Ford's lovely garden, and mm. I just think you know it's just a very special place, Ireland. I and we saw lots of different. We did gardens, we did. private gardens, not to, you know. I yes, think that's yeah. the essence of it. I think we don't really want to run trips that you could just sort of buy in, from your Sunday, Sunday supplement sort of thing. Yeah. I, I want to 
to make them a little bit more individually based and nice restaurant and an uh, interesting yeah. art exhibition and build mm. build it around things that we want to do. Lovely. We Lovely. made a wonderful contact with Frances McDonald, didn't yeah. we, in Ireland, who who helped us put together our programme. It was yeah, it was really yeah. and what about coming back uh, back in the in the garden house in the garden? So what's what are your thoughts for the future now and, and short term and long term? What's what's going to be happening in the garden? Oh well we're just about to make a dry garden actually which is really Ooh. exciting. Mm -hmm. So we're about to dig up the lawn and we've designed it um, and we're going to, we've got quite a, a reasonable sized lawn here, but it always looks a mess because we're an organic garden and it's just hopeless trying to keep the lawn looking nice. So we've just decided that we're going to make a dry garden. So that's mm -hmm. the next thing. We're, we're going to start that next month, actually. Oh, right. OK. Well, that's really exciting. Um, yeah. Really exciting, actually. Yeah. So that's what's your what what's your who are your influences are you sort of have you got the olivia felipe dry garden book oh, under yeah, your yeah, arm yes, yes, we <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i i right. heard him speak at um west dean yeah yeah we were there and it was yeah 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 yeah, yeah, we've, yeah, we've, we've, yeah so he was in and obviously beth chatto's dry garden and there's lots of dry gardens around at the moment aren't there to, yeah to, so yeah we've got all the plants ready yeah, right uh, we've grown a lot of them ourselves here mm -hmm. um, things etc and we had a talk with steve edney mm. steve edney which was great yeah. on our garden so we got a lot of inspiration from him as well yeah actually, no, that was that as far was, yeah. as we're concerned so mm. we're doing you know we are doing some online courses at the moment workshops because of obviously because of covid right so got tom tom brown from westing coming to do a talk yeah. on zoom soon so he'll i'm sure give us some inspiration we, some we've got ideas. another i mean because of covid obviously our room is relatively small so we can only fit six people in here mm, mm. but we are going to next week we're doing a, a, a garden design course mm -hmm. and we've also um we, we've got we're doing a hands-on pruning course with simon mm -hmm. white from peter beals oh lovely yeah. simon he's great yeah, he's, yeah, 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 he's, yeah, got, he's got the best sense of humor that man he's so droll <laughs> yes. yeah so he's he's come back i think every year we've had oh he's great he's great, great. so lovely. that will be a learning by doing again he'll, yes he'll, he'll and is that general pruning or is that rose pruning Rose, yeah. roses yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Excellent. we're doing a beginner's gardening course, aren't we? Learning yeah. by doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, where people are going to be working in the garden, um, and and trying to encourage people to think that they can garden in January, February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. because it is still. Yeah, it's it's lovely. Funny. Yeah, and and you know, it's, winter gardening I think is, is a great thing. So we've got to promote that certainly. Yeah. So I mean, the idea of this garden is that it looks interesting all year round. That's one mm -hmm. of we're trying to create here, really. Yeah. And going back to your dry garden for a minute. So is the idea that it's um, is it a, is it a, a plants that are, you walk through and walk on? Is there is it gravel based? How, how what's the sort of general gist of the design? OK, there's um, there's going to be a part. There's paths running through it. basically, right. And mm -hmm. the plants will topple over the paths. Yes. And you can walk. The idea is that you're sitting amongst the plants. They're going to be yeah. little little seating areas. Little, so yeah. Like, you're going to feel sort of actually enclosed, enclosed. by the plants. So oh okay okay it's not a massive space as i said this is only a third of an acre mm. not, so yeah but, um, yeah it's gonna be, be great I hope. yeah it's gonna look really lovely um so so will you in, will you involve your students and uh, in in the in the creation of that yeah yes, yeah yeah and they've been involved in the design of it and the growing of the plants and so we'll also involve them in the you know the hard we've got a hard landscaper coming but they'll help as well so we can right, right. well that's good so you'll keep everybody up to date on social media about how that's going then i we guess <laughs> lots of photographs that would be that would be brilliant that'd be brilliant well we will put up the um your website details obviously um on the in the chat box so that people can see that and go to your website for those who are abroad they can they can visit virtually but also for people who are in the uk they can um, hopefully come and see you and, and get that wonderful surprise as they walk down the alleyway and then yes. all, all is revealed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's been really great chatting to you both. I mean, I, mean, I know you both quite well, so it, and I know the Garden House well, and it's, it's, a, it's a really special place. Um, because it's so unusual in its location and the size and and that wonderful surprise but also you two because it's your combination of of what you do and and you kept saying you're doing the things that you love but obviously and, and the things that you want to do but I think that's such a winning formula because you know that, you know if, if there's something special to you then it's going to be special to somebody else as well yeah. 
Um, and the fact I think that you both come from an educational background. So that's very much at the core of what you do. Um, so I think for sort of for a city like Brighton, it's such a wonderful resource. I mean, you know, just fantastic. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So so good luck this year and good luck with your dry garden. I'm going to come and have a look at that. <laughs> Right. OK. Rather abrupt ending there, I have to say. So, Bridge, um, that, that it was so lovely to talk to you both. And um, and you can see everyone, everyone who's watching. I know there are a lot of people watching who know Bridget and they know Deborah and they know the combination. But I, you can you can that lovely double act, the, the dynamic duo that they are um, is really, you know, that that speaks volumes, actually, Bridge. I have to ask one question before, because I know there are going to be questions, but you had some really lovely watercolour sketches as part of your presentation. Are they are they Deborah's drawings or are they? Can you no, remember? No, then. No, they're not. They're um, the ones that are on the wall. Yeah, yeah. No, there were a course that somebody called Shana Mullen. Okay. She's okay. doing another workshop here in March. Oh, she's nice amazing, time. actually. She's really brilliant. And so Lovely. she, yeah. There, there we've, we've got some questions and comments. Um, okay. uh, Max is saying he remembers the Alan Jenkins breakfast. I think yeah. Alan Jenkins is going to get lots of emails now because obviously he'll do, <laughs> he'll do a free talk. So I, I watch his email box. <laughs> and then and Henry's also saying that Alan Jenkins breakfast was so great and so interesting the garden house is a very special place the events and courses are quite intimate which makes them very special and Bridge and Deborah have um have built something welcoming and beautiful which is true um and oh, Wendy really nice. Wendy, can I, Wendy. Just, um, Wed, can I just say that Henry and Max are very important to us as well because they're all actually coming to um, do a staking they do a staking course here every year teaching people how to stake their plants so they'll be coming again yeah you only let you only let the best horticulturalists yeah, in, don't you? Right, yeah, exactly. yeah absolutely um i did put the website details at the top of the chat box if anybody um wants to check out the garden house i mean you must check out the garden house who wouldn't want to um has anyone got any questions um just a comment actually on the on, on, on this i'm fascinated by the idea of the staking class um i mean ah. actually, I, i'd like to see a staking debate um <laughs> to, to stake or not to stake because one of the sort of central principles really of the new perennial movement is that is is staking is an absolute no no a kind of victorian ah. throwback Oh, um, no. come, on, Max. come on, Henry. Well, 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 we could have an interesting debate. Another interesting debate. Um, we've had this wonderful, uh, well, we're halfway through it, this wonderful uh, lecture series from Linda Chalker Scott in, in uh, Washington State, um, who is very keen on mulching. And of course, in Pacific Northwest, they've got a huge amount of wood chip mulch, and she uses you know, a 30 centimeter layer of wood chip mulch as a way of essentially eliminating weeds over the course of a year, which is a great alternative to, to, uh, to herbicide. Um, but then we have a, a German lady who was attending the course who said that, you know, the leading, uh, a leading horticulture professor in Germany starts frothing at the mouth. It's the mere mention of mulching. So <laughs> I think there's, you know, would you want to host, host some of these debates perhaps? Yeah, that sounds good. Well, as I said, Noel, you haven't seen Henry and Max's staking. Um, <laughs> staking is an art <laughs> form. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. And, um, and Bridge, are there any things, are you noticed, we were chatting before and you said you've got a plant fair coming up in the spring. Yeah, yeah. we've done quite a lot of plant fairs here before in the past, but mm -hmm. because of obviously of COVID, we haven't done any for a couple of years, but we're going to do one on the 21st of May and we really like to have local nurseries and, and things involved and local makers so we'll have the wonderful um, Paul Seaborn from Pell and Plants here with his plants and probably Paul and Pauline from the Sussex Prairies and lots of sort of local people so that we'll put that on Instagram so people mm -hmm. must come along and, and buy right. some plants. And, yeah, um, and any any trips um, have you got any trips in the on the calendar yet or not are they not still quite yeah. no I mean we're going to hopefully get something going uh, mm. a bit later on in the year but we're looking yeah. at various things but just maybe biding our time for a bit to see what happens really yeah yeah um and uh, jenny nelson saying as fergus says intelli intelligent use of mulch i have to comment on the picture of um fergus which has to be at least 25 years old uh, very very flattering 
No, very flattering. I think he'd be thrilled to bits. To He's not wearing his hat, is he? <laughs> One of his many funny hats. But yes. um, no, no, it's been it's been great. Um, yes. Yeah, so any any other questions or anybody got anything they want to ask or comment on before we say cheerio to Bridge? And anybody? No, no comments. No, no, no more. We will copy the comment box and send it to you so that you can see um, what people have got okay, to say. Oh, Hester's saying a big hello from Cork. Oh, hi, Hester. We yeah, hope to come yeah. see you again soon, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And oh, um, Jenny's saying a veritable who, who's who in the gardening world. Um, well yeah. done. They certainly are. They certainly are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank Please, you again. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was great. Yeah, yes. thank you. And thanks, everybody. Really for, inspirational place. Thanks, everybody, thank for tuning in um, from far and wide and along yes. the South Coast. I think we've got a good South Coast contingency tonight, but... Um, um, it's lovely to see everybody and uh, hope to see you again soon. Um, we've got another interesting um, person next um, next Thursday night at six o'clock. That's the time to tune in. So um, please do tune in. And Bridget, thank you very much. And, and say a big thank you to Deborah as well. I will. Yeah. Thank you as well. Nice to see everybody. Great. Yeah. And, and uh, you can play us out with a little uh, melody if you like. No. <laughs> Go on, you know you oh, want to. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, see you soon, everybody. Anyway. Yeah, good night, and thanks ever so much, everybody. It's lovely to see you all. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.